Um, so I was telling everybody in the chat that I was gonna play the entry sound, so pretend uh, our entry. Uh, welcome to the geese discussion, every pony. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I guess that was better than the revise discussion opening. So I haven't seen it. I will see then. <laughs> So, welcome to the discussion, oh Every Pony. We'll be discussing episodes 1 through 11. And also, I lied! The thumbnail is not the one I actually put up the whole time. It's actually the true protagonist of the show, the real main character, Sakura Keiwa Des. Let's go! Oh, wow, okay. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> I love Sakura. Hooray! Yeah, he's he's pretty cool, but <laughs> we'll, we will get into him and a lot others in just a bit. So, Aki. Uh, it's me. Your introduction. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Aki. I go by they, them. Um, I, uh, it's like the Hamoto no Oni dude on Twitter. Yeah, that guy. Uh, on Discord, they're funk, but they go by Will, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's me, Will. Uh, I use any pronouns, but that will be he or they. Uh, that both work for me. Justifies underscore on Twitter. I write Twitter threads. I need to talk about fires. Yes. <laughs> ja, Joshua. Hi, uh, I'm Josh. I go by he, him. I do art sometimes on Twitter. Saya Enterprise Austria. <laughs> Marco Satsu. I hate common writer. Ver. Ver? Ver? Yeah, yeah. Ver. Ver. Cross out the bingo. Crossing it out. Damn. Um, um, I'm there. I go by she, they, it, but for like, um, easierness, you can just sh say she. Um, victims on love of victims of love on Twitter. I should post, and sometimes I draw. <laughs> and everybody's Ooh, favorite gin. Ooh. Jin. Hi, I'm Jin. Let's go. I go by he, him. I'm on Twitter by barely talk about Toku on there. But if you want to follow me, Jin Kyodai. Two wins. Oh, that's you? Oh, I... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should be following you. <laughs> I... You didn't know? <laughs> I, see, I, see you, I see you like my posts a lot, but I forgot this. I'm so sorry. I'm so It's sorry. all good. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um once again, I lied. Geats does not suck. It is actually really, really good. Uh, now it is. Did I just get trolled? Uh, I, I was Did you actually just troll me for like a, like two entire days. I, I was expecting yeah, get... a more reaction out of that. Get I, I, thought I, was gonna, I, I thought I was gonna get fucked. I, I'm betrayed personally. I was like, I'm gonna debate Marco Sato. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna prove it is good. So let me just start out by saying, um, obviously there will be spoilers. Uh, obviously, obviously, uh, we will be talking about one through eleven. Uh, episode eleven just got sub today, and we all watched it. Hopefully, so that way we can all talk about it because there is a lot to talk about. Um, so with that out of the way. Uh, spoilers ahead, uh, enjoy the discussion. So, let me just say, one of the first things I actually really, really don't like, and that's more of a me thing, is when someone's like, oh wow, the first 10 episodes of this show are so, so fantastic, poggers, they're the best out of any common writer ever. And then, like, later on the show, it's not like that, and then it's like, what happened? But, mm. I... <laughs> Man, I was really trying to hold back every episode after episode after episode. I was like, uh, oh man, this is really good. I, I, I don't think it like tops build or anything, but it's just like really, really awesome to watch. Just like back to back. And then I remembered back to my revise discussion. I said the same thing. I was like, wow, these first 12 or so episodes are really good. And then I ended up not liking the rest of the show. <laughs> so, so, oh my gosh. So I want to try to be careful with this and say, hmm. Yes, these first 11 episodes have been beyond my personal expectations. I, I I think I can safely say I love these first 11 episodes so far. It's just been yeah. so good. Yeah. There's so much going on. There's so much intrigue. I don't think I've been this interested in a Kamen Rider season since Build. And uh, honestly, 
And I think that says a lot to my own personal taste. But anyway, um, I also want to say that I lied mm. once again. I did not binge everything Woo! in one day. <laughs> I, I, I was actually I was... watching it through work for the past week just to catch up. And I have my notes. I actually wrote them down in the notepad. And I'm not lying when I say every single one of these episode notes always start out with, man, this opening sucks. This OP is stinky, <laughs> bad. This one, this OP makes me cry. Zero out of Full ten. Laundry. <laughs> but mm. but anyway, uh, <laughs> that, that's my thoughts out of the way. Let's start with Aki. Uh, oh yeah, so I think East is cool. I like it when men argue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Okay. On on a real note, I think East is looking really promising i like how they're setting up this really good mystery that's going on around dg dgp and like the characters i re i especially really like the uh, action direction this show has so far because they actually make use of the revolve feature really well and you can see the characters use like the parts and the weapons they have to their full potential and they making really good use of the cgi as well during the fights which i think is like not really a strong suit in some writer shows i I'm really liking it so far. I really like Cable, Buffer, and you know, all, all four main riders also really solid. Uh, I don't really have any problems with so fifth one. Before we get to Will, uh, thank you, Seth and Flame, for the donation. Donating to the eventual Geet Shrine that Marcus will have. Uh, coincidentally, oh. I was thinking about buying Geet stuff right after I finished episode 11, so <laughs> it begins. Will! The only I have a lot of thoughts about Geats. I've been, I've been unable to shut up about it. I also have not been as excited for a camera season since build. Because um, I remember like when like episode 3 came out, I was so anxious. Like, when, episode, when is episode 4 coming out? I was so excited. Um, it starts off really strong. It is a very refreshing take when you compare it to Reiwa. Uh, as far as we've gotten right now. I, I don't like comparing seasons as well. But like... I've, Geet is so, so different in a way. Yes. It's, it just hits a different feeling. You get what I mean? Um, and people have talked to me. They know have like a very big hatred for like <laughs> Yuya Takahashi's writing style. And, I'm, and I was really scared for Geet when it came out. Uh, I was like, oh no. <laughs> but then like episode one came out. I was like, wow, that was really good. <laughs> and then episode two came out. I was like, wow, that was really good. Back to back. And uh I personally, here's my controversial take. I think uh, Trust Last goes hard because uh, it reminds me, and please unlock me, it's like a, it feels like a League of Legends music video. <laughs> like, <laughs> it really sells the game. <laughs> like, listen to it. If you listen to it, if you put like a League of Legends animation over it, it fits so well. It's like that slightly triumphant noise. You, you feel me, I hope. <laughs> and the um, thing is, like, what I'm really excited about, I'm 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 I'm, uh, I'm gonna try not to rumble too much from the start because I don't, I want people to have their opinions as well heard. But um, I was what I really like about it is it really hits down this kind of game motif really hard. Like I don't think X Aid did even close as good of a job as this is. Like I'm invested in the plots of the fucking episodes. They're just like the games where nothing really. I, I, I'm invested in everything. From the episode, like, wow, look at this monster, how are they gonna defeat this game? Like, it's really unique and really fun with the way it approaches stuff. It's not just a monster that beats the shit out of people. Oh, wait, wait, we did go through the introductions. I thought I swore before the introductions. I was like, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really unique in the way it approaches like fights, and I think that's really cool. I'm really excited for Geeks, and I really like its characters. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump I'm gonna jump here for now. <laughs> uh, I've I've been told of the famous Will tangents and <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. I, I I'm trying to, to, to not talk over people so hard. Oh, no 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 don't, don't feel bad. Uh, that's we're we're here mm. to discuss and call love trust last stinky. So it's yeah. okay. Mm. Yes, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> What Will said? Okay, no, I'm joking. Let's go! <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> I have to be honest. I hated Geats at first, and I yes. refused to watch it until Marcus hit me up. <laughs> and I really wanted to hate it. But after the, the 10th episode, 
I started liking it. Ten? And it's it's kind of embarrassing. I don't know. I I just started liking it. I didn't watch the eleventh episode, by the way. But that's okay. <laughs> Uh, but I really wanted to hate it, now it's embarrassing because I actually kind of like it and I will probably continue it. Uh, anything else smart I could say right now? Hmm. Uh. I also hated it at first until my sibling told me <laughs> what happened in episode 11 and now I think I'm... I think my views have changed a bit towards him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope Grandpa doesn't die. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sorry. I I struggle with names so bad. Ver? It's okay. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. I have to say, I um, I got into Rider like a year ago, and I watched Revise as it aired, um, which was like a fever dream. And now that I'm watching Geats as it airs, it makes more sense. I feel like, like, I've been really enjoying Geats. Like, I hated the suits at first because I was still, like, used to the, the revised suits, the, like, super colorful ones and mashed up ones. But so that I, like, I didn't ex appreciate the simplicity of the Geats suits at first. Um, and I really grew to love them. And in my eyes, like, uh, Geats is way better than revise till now because I think the premise is just more interesting and they have buffer so that's it so damn <laughs> oh you have a lot oh, of fans also... no one revise fan of a call is dying right now why yeah, does that's buffer... just, that's why just does my friends like... why does buffer look like he belongs in blade <laughs> honestly <laughs> real real also I wanted to Actually, add that, that the real. OP I, I did exposure therapy. I hated it at first because it's uh. like super offbeat and it is still super offbeat. And it's like, it's a terrible song, but I've listened to it so much on loop while driving to school <laughs> that I started to like, like I did exposure therapy. I like it now, but only like by forcing. I'm sorry. I also like to add that I really hated the suit and driver at first too, but now Vea bought the Desire Driver and I kind of have to like it now or else they'll kill me. <laughs> yeah, I will not bring it over. Hey, I Bear. got sold on the idea when I land. It's... Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I was just gonna ask uh, if uh, they know what happened to Dapan. Yeah, do you know what happened? Oh my god. <laughs> shut do up. Do you know what happened? <laughs> Literally shut the fuck up. <laughs> do, you know what, do, do you know what happened to Dapan? <laughs> no. I did not know. Oh, you should watch the show then. Jin! Um, I think Geet oh, is sorry. okay. What? I, I gotta be honest, like, really? I was excited for it, but like, I think maybe it's probably Rider Bird now or whatever, but I was kind of like just okay on mm -hmm. the first and second episode. Uh, but I think once that two-parter with K-Wall came on, those were the best episodes. Holy moly. Hey, what? Is the main character of the show and is the number one character I'm the most invested in. Like, Real. give me more Kawa and Geats is gonna be top tier for me. Cause yeah, Ace is cool, Buffa is cool, and all Neon too, but I I kind of really don't care about them that much. I care more <laughs> about Kawa. Mm -hmm. And honestly, though, I will say that with episode 10 and 11, I'm getting more interested in the show because of the mystery that's currently building on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like, I do like the premises going on with the Desire Grand Prix and all that, and this whole, like, tournament game motif, but I think, like, I thought I've seen it before already a bunch of times. Just me, probably. So, it's probably, like, not grabbing me as much, but when it comes to, like, the mysteries happening behind the whole thing, that's where it catches me. And seeing how Kawa is gonna come back and how and what his next switch is going to be and how he's going to try and win and what the other rounds are going to bring. Because the cool thing about Gates is how they basically so showed us that there's going to be different desired Grand Prix happening throughout each several episodes. Like we just had the first one that we had the one with um, Neon um, being entered, Michinaga being entered and so forth. And now we have a new one with two new characters who like are probably going to get killed off immediately, but <laughs> who cares? Honestly. And I'm pretty sure like one, <laughs> The Christmas episode comes gonna be the end of a new round, and it's gonna start a um, start a new Grand Prix. So that's really interesting. But so far, I'm just like pretty lukewarm on Geats, but I do have um like I do have some excitement to see what's gonna come from the future because for me, 
like it didn't start out as strong as Revis. One second. Um, didn't start out strong as zero one Revis for me, but I think maybe that's probably to its benefit because we all know Yuya Takahashi is writing this show, and this guy sometimes has a problem going a little too nuts. Yeah, but the producer is a different person other than Omori, <laughs> so. I have, you know, I have some, you know, some good hopes. I hopefully, you know, they manage to, like, exceed my expectations. Because right now, Geek is right, right in the middle for me. Like, it's okay, but there is good mm. stuff there that I want to see it expand upon. <laughs> I don't really care about the toys, but I do love the beat buckle. That's the yeah. best one they showed off. And what else? The opening. <laughs> Terrible. Yes. I hate it whenever it gets stuck <laughs> oh. in my head because that's <laughs> the I hate that opening. because. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like yeah you got these two like you got shonen on kaze and this um famous some um, female singer but i don't think their styles work together like it's clashing for me like you should have picked one or the other you want a hype ass song take shonen no kaze if you want a good medley you should have gone with the female singer because i think the current geese team doesn't work i really hope they come out with a version of geese opening where it's either just the female singer or just shonen no kaze mm-hmm. maybe that'll change my opinion on the opening and that's it hey jen uh if i Oh, if I may add uh, about the thing you mentioned earlier, it's been it kind of come my attention. Is you said like you've seen this plot line all, like before, and I do agree. Like the game when you know you fight, survive, and get your ideal world, isn't the most unique thing ever. But I think it's a really fun thing. Still, I really enjoy the execution of it. I'm surprised of how well it's handled. I genuinely expect the Yutahashi to drop it at episode ten. Um, I'm still really invested. I think it's cool, and I love you were right. Like about the mystery thing, that's so cool. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. that's what has me like a little more hooked on Geats now. Just that whole mystery behind what are the Jamato? What is the whole desire Grand Prix? Where the hell is Ace's mom? Like, why is Ace almost a thousand years old? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, cross almost. Cross that. He's twenty. He's twenty, guys. <laughs> he's, 20. he's twenty. Dude okay. said, "Oh, I've been participating since one AD." <laughs> Uh, guys he's 20 <laughs> he's 20 you know what hey well <laughs> yes have you heard what happened to buffa oh my god buffa these what, nuts what happened to ah! buffa? <laughs> um, let's, hear it. let's hear it is that a single one jen already said it but anyway <clears throat> um buffa, these nuts, yeah. i I'm, I'm gonna go off what both of you said and that Maybe yeah, yeah, we have seen like general ideas surrounding this stuff before, but really it's all the details that makes it so different. Like, I, <laughs> the whole what's going on behind the scenes thing is pretty much at every single battle royale thing ever made. Like you can't even consider Danganronpa. Like a lot of the stuff that you can see influenced by, but these characters are so good i love kewa i love neon i love all like even the one-offs uh rip letter i hope uh grandpa mm. writer's okay <laughs> i like i actually care about these characters and like like e- even the bad characters like mary and punk jack they're just they're just so over the top excuse me yes punk jack is great what are you talking about yeah i'm, 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 I'm saying that great character in the show i'm saying that i really like them and and if and if we're going with our favorite characters i think punk jack might be my favorite le- like writer so far in in uh in geats i love his personality i love his his music mm. rockstar like loudness I, I i actually like his suit a lot even with monster on like a lot of it just all these characters just really work together especially since they come from mm-hmm. so many different backgrounds and they all just clash so much but they're still able to talk things out like one of my favorite scenes so far was around i think episode seven or six when it was just like um ace neon and kawa just like actually just sitting in, in like the base and just talking for a bit you know like being kind of like friends yeah. and and that and that just that was just a really mm-hmm. nice interaction to have and uh, let me see and, and going through my notes just i just love everything like like michinaga is such a cool guy i like him so much i mm-hmm. I, I i love that his that, that that his belt is so tight on him because i can hold him with one hand and he's so cool exactly <laughs> i will give this i, I stuff like that's another positive of the show is like these interactions have like these little changes in the characters that it's kind of blinking you'll miss it but if you notice whenever k1 got injured you can see michinaga actually kind of worried about k1 yeah and like those little small interactions are really neat to see. I think 
I like think that's to... my favorite thing about Bluffer oh. so far, because you can see he's not actually a bad person. He's just someone that's been so indulged in his own a hatred for Ace that his head mm. just kind of gets blurred out sometimes. And I think throughout his interactions with k and others, I think he learned to mellow out a bit and actually become proper mm. rivals <laughs> with Ace, which I think happened around like the end of the first Grand Prix, which I really loved, because they actually yes. had like a really good exchange. Exactly. Mm. Uh... <laughs> I feel like, uh, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's okay. That's just really quick. But I think just my favorite thing ever in these recent seasons of Rider was when was when Ace uh, does an autograph on Michinaga's shirt. <laughs> and, you see, <laughs> Ace, fucking god. You see, I didn't really care about Ace that much at first, but I love that little detail that he just decides to give him an autograph, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> I also yeah. love that he just just. That whole, like, episode was just him flirting with, like, Michinaga, and, like, <laughs> nobody, like, questioned it. Like, is this what he does? Like... I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we all love men. Uh, I think it's yes. real. I think that I, uh, that's actually uh, one of the reasons why I like uh, Geet so much. It's because, uh, again, I'm going to share into Takahashi. I'm sorry. Yeah. I cannot help it. Uh, but um, he makes really interesting character archetypes and he makes a really unique uh, personality for the franchise. Like, that's been a consistent thing he does. But the thing is, in previous seasons, he's had like some struggles with developing the dynamics. And I think the first 11 episodes of Geese does more than Zero One and X8 ever did for their characters. Uh, Whoa. Because. Um, uh, I am, I'm making a bold statement here because uh, Keiwa is such a developed character already and there's so much room for him to go and I'm like, wow. Like, I'm so invested in this man. Like, he de genuinely does feel like the main character. And the thing is, he's not. And Ace is there. And Ace kind of like, maybe I'm a big Kabuto fan, but like, he's very similar to Tender in the way he behaves. I think most people have like drawn that comparison. Yeah. Calm down. And there's a bit of a baddie, but uh, man, man, and this, man, and this is really fun. And so see, having like a character that simmed him is surprising because I'm surprised we haven't had one since. Like it's been how many years? Like 16 years, I think. I may be wrong about the math, but I remember when Kabuto came out. But it's like around then, like wow, we really haven't had such an asshole main character. And seeing the way, like, there's so much depth to him. Like, he's not, he's, just, he's not just cocky, but he has, like, something going on. It's so much fun. And as people mentioned before with Buffer, I, I will never call him Michinaga. I just keep calling him Buffer. Um, <laughs> like, this character is... I, I wasn't sold on Buffer for the first five episodes. I was like, oh, he's cool, I guess. But um, seeing him, like, after he pairs up with Kewa how he changed the point where like I want to point out even in the opening you notice Buffer has changed posture he's no longer as closed up and like kind of like intimidating he's opening up slowly but surely and I will go more in depth with later on, on down the night but uh, there's so many themes that are embodied in each character about like the values of life and like how different ah my door and how different <laughs> people behave and I think it's really cool I'm really excited uh also, punk rock is uh, kind of hot. I always wanted a punk rocker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree with Will. I've been really excited. I was really excited for punk rock because I'm really, I'm really like excited about unique character archetypes. And I thought from the start, punk rock was going to be that character who was just not going to speak at all, which I was really excited for because I really love those mute type characters that speak with science or only body language. Because yeah. I think it, it adds a lot of charm to certain characters. But I'm really glad at least his personality is really unique and colorful. So it's like an even trade out if he lost his like, mute, <clears throat> mute thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the we can really have our own discussions about like every single character here. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think I wanted to focus a little bit more on Ace because I, I've been 
always a big purveyor of we should have more writer protagonists that are kind of cocky and and pretty much like Sukasa and Tendo and I don't, and the last one we really had was like Sento but he lost his like cockiness like halfway through and was more just heroic in general. Uh, I mean it, it was still there but still um, I I think I think Ace might be like the writer protagonist I've personally always wanted like. I see people say that he's he's a jerk and like he deserves to like swallow thumbtacks and stuff, but like oh, I, I, I I personally don't see that. I personally think he's he's a jerk ish type, but he's still nice. Like he wants to save the world yeah. and he and yeah, he's a he's he like deceived a few people here and there, but by the end goal he still saves the world. He still saves the people. He's yeah. still that Tsukasa savior savior of the world, not destroyer of it. Mm. And people may not like him. But I also think that's kind of the point. You're not supposed yeah, yeah. to. He he has his own motives, and he doesn't really care how he gets it. In fact, that's why like uh, Sudumi Sudumi is his sister because he thought it was funny, <laughs> and because and because he wanted I to get closer so. to the to the Desire yeah. Grand Prix. Mm. Yeah. I think like Honestly, a, a big thing of him. Oh yeah, go on. So are you can go on. I've been talking okay, a lot. Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. For me personally, it felt like Ace had. Like no personality at all at first. I don't know. I I I really hated him at first because he just felt so bland and just cocky. But after the shirt signature thing and after that episode where he wished for the other people to be his family, he he kind of grew into me. Not gonna lie. Like I was so ready to hate him for the entirety of Keats, but I I can't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think one thing about Ace I really like is that he's not just an asshole. You can actually see his heroic motives in the deep end after all those deceiving and, you know, like bullshit he tells. I really like that about him because even in episode two, after Ginpan died, he donated he donated to save Ginpan's child. Yeah. You know, like he's yeah. not he's not an asshole. If it exactly. if that didn't happen, I would not be sold on Ace because I really mm -hmm. don't like the characters that are just that are just cocky or just like an asshole it's like a character yeah. like archetype i really hate that's why i'm really loving ace because you can actually see bits of really bits of depth he has that can be expanded upon and he can become like such a great protagonist he already is and like exactly um we, oh. we could also like remember the time when um Kegel and his sister accidentally ran into Neon and Ace at that ramen shop. Yeah. And when oh my god. Was sister, when Kegel's sister dropped that their parents are dead, we could see a sudden change in Ace. Okay, that reminded me. That reminded me yeah. of when a uh, couple took a person. That reminded me of when <laughs> uh Will, you should remember it. When uh Surugi hit Tando's sister car and then they actually had an understanding for once during that because they actually can relate to each other's families. Doesn't you know, they? They both are like a Valmont mm -hmm. family. Uh, that reminded me of that because I think Ace just—I said this before. I'm pretty sure Ace being a person who just deep down, after all, like behind all those, beyond all those deceiving, deceivings and lies and shit, him just being a person who wants a proper family and one thing to find his mother him just being that i think would be a pretty cool concept i i'd like that simplicity on it yeah i think like it's really cool that uh, ace is like i think a good way to describe his character is like well-meaning but mischievous like he does what i would like to call a little bit of trolling <laughs> but, um, yeah. like, consistently if you look at what he has done he has never like caused anyone like actual harm like he has never got anyone killed like, he has always saved them he tricks them to get like you know the upper hand and win but he has always made sure to you know, kind of make up for it like even when Jinfin died he you know he made a donation like we have consistently been shown how he has like this jerk persona but consistently is able to be a good guy we, we, we know it's a persona in a way and that's, that's the fun part and if I may <laughs> get a bit into it um ace is like i think really fits the themes of having to kind of like toughen up whilst also being able to be a good person he has this rough exterior because he doesn't want you know like get you know <laughs> fucked wow. but at the same time sorry i couldn't find a better term he doesn't want to get like you know fucked over because of his niceness but he's still able to afford kindness and i think that's the really big appeal of ace he is 
just an asshole enough to be likable while also not stepping into the point where you're like, can this guy shut up? And I think that's <laughs> why I like him. Uh, it's really well written. I think he's like... the. I think another thing that makes him good is because he like clashes with how like we've gotten really used to the good guys, like the goody to you self boys, which I love. I love. I love them a lot. But Ace being so different is what makes him so like... Wow, I did not know I wanted this. And I really like that. Yeah. I think I think the thing about D what is anyone else gonna speak? I don't want to take the entire time. <laughs> I don't know. I get interested. I, I <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> I was gonna say I think the thing about geese is that there's like really good unique archetypes sort of main for and and you can just pick whoever you're gonna like. Because if you don't like, if you want a goody two shoes dude, you have Kaba. If you want like a really fucking revengeful dude who, who just like wants to destroy this one dude, you have Buffer. If you want a story about, you know, self discovery and, you know, find, find the meaning about low, let's say for now, you have Neon. If you want a cocky dude who, who who's like really mysterious, but also you know that he's a good guy, you have, you have Ace. I think. That's like the main attraction to be about Geats. You have really colorful archetypes that are part of the main cast. So, you know, they're all going to go different directions in their own way and develop. I think that's like a really big attraction to me about Geats. Can I also yeah, add my yeah. two cents about Ace? Um, at, the, at first, <laughs> like, I, I really like was um, taken aback because I was still used to Icky. Um, as said, I watched Revise. Um, and then like ace came and i also really wanted to like not like him since a lot of people are like oh he's shit whatever <laughs> um but then when the oh my god i don't even remember the name but when the dude died and he donated to the kid mm. in the hospital i like already saw that he's like not that bad yeah. like i feel like he, he he probably built up walls like after if, if he's really as old as he says he's he is like those two thousand years whatever I think he probably just built up really tall walls around him so that he seems shit to other people, but he isn't in reality. Because I feel like he truly cares about people. Like when he saw Neon in the street after she got like eliminated, um, and he was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" and whatever. <laughs> and like, also, I have to think about the flashback to Buffalo's friend dying. Um, uh, <laughs> that's not sad um, Jeez. um because buffer obviously took it the wrong way but i feel like ace didn't mean it and like of course I, yeah i think he didn't mean it in any like mean way but also i feel like buffer should like get over his thing of like blaming ace that to toru died because like it obviously you know but yeah i i really like ace that's my conclusion <laughs> Honestly, I kind of, I, I kind of see why Buffer is so mad at him. Like, imagine your best friend dying, and then like the next thing you see is some guy telling you to forget about it all. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the fun part because like Ace means well, but he like Buffer's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? My friend just died. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I do just think. Approaches it a bit uh, bad. Mm-hmm. This like, the, the fun part, like it's like Aki described, is like the cast is really colorful, and I think if I, I'm gonna draw a comparison to Dom Brothers of all things, uh, oh, okay. the two recent, like, you know, Sentai and uh, Geats have been able to recently explore a lot of facets of life, which are, in my opinion, uh, the Grand Prix is kind of like a way to show like people's ambitions clashing in order to get their dream. I think I I genuinely believe the Grand Prix is a metaphor for all uh, the fancy life stuff, which I will get into eventually. But uh, <laughs> uh, I think the fun part is like, we have so many varied people because it does represent how everybody in this kind of like setting is fighting for their dream. And it's so cool because we are stuck with a cast that only KO is like this altruistic thing we're used to. Like only KO falls into our standard Kamen Rider good guy even nago is selfish a little bit with reason of course like i have fully i am a nago stan i love this woman <laughs> but um 
the thing is, like, everybody in the season is a little bit, just a little bit selfish. And Ace, when, like, confronted by K, was like, hey, isn't that weird? Isn't that bad? Ace was like, no, we're fighting for it. Might as well. And I think that's really cool, seeing, like, an actually, like, very flawed cast become better people to get yeah. their dreams. It's cool. And I think the thing about Geese is that they don't show that to be a bad thing. They show it to be human, which I really like because, you know, a human wanting fighting for what they want is not a wrong thing. If especially if it's like a lifelong dream they had. I like I like that Geese definitely has this gray morality to it where none of them being selfish is, is just represented as a bad thing. It's just represented as human. It's cool. I think what makes skeet stand out to me just overall is a lot of its storytelling isn't well at least to me it doesn't feel like your typical common writer show it feels more like a character study with drama that just so happens to have these people that can transform into common writers and yes you could probably say that about a couple of seasons but th there's just like a feeling of like this doesn't really go into the conventions of a common writer show and mm. i think it's about that time that i'm going to compare it to ryuki and the this is probably not a cheering moment for enjoyers of ryuki because oh come on man because okay well, well of course you, you can always have your own thoughts on this but <laughs> real quick or kind of quick uh to me, I always say whenever I bring up Ryuki, yeah, it's a Battle Royale themed show, but it doesn't have that Battle Royale feel to it because you only ever see like four characters at once and then the rest are just kind of effed off wherever they go. So like... They're probably dead most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but but here in Geats, you know there are like 50 people that are con writers that are losing. You see these people actually like get killed and eaten and eaten by by, by the Jamatos. And I thought that's that's like that's actually kind of terrifying. And I like yeah. I, I I like seeing these stakes. I like seeing the things mm -hmm. actually in front of you and not just like 13 people in this 50 episode show and two of them are only in like side specials and whatever and then mm -hmm. and then then you just have four main characters i mean yeah we have that with uh ace neon uh keiwa and mishinaga but you see everybody else uh, interacting with them mm -hmm. i think mary interacted with every single one at least once i think dapon interacted with every single one of those people at least once you know like they did yeah so so there's just a lot more real feelings to this i guess or like a human mm -hmm. element that i think was missing from from even like um from ryuki in a way so mm -hmm. to and 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 this might be my last point in that it's it's a modern show you know, Ryuki was limited in what it could do. You can easily tell with, with like, it's CGI and stuff. But I think with yeah. the advancement of technology, especially in Con Rider, you can just see, like, like how far we've come from Ryuki. We can actually see, or uh, we can actually have all, all these extras and have all these really cool graphics of, like, these Con Riders that we'll never see. But you will see, like, their logos and their names, at least. And you'll see all the Desire Grand Prix stuff. And it just makes it feel more alive. It makes it feel more real. Yeah. It makes it feel like there's an actual battle royale happening. And mm -hmm. and that, and that's and that's a big thing that stands out with Geats to me. Mm. If yeah. I may add... Uh... I really do agree with the side characters being so cool with this battle royale theming. Because, uh, again, as you said, like with the technology, uh, being able to see like so many characters actually exist, because you can tell, like, and the ability is also really sick. Like, you can say, like, they could not replicate Tycoon's ninja back in the day. Like, they try with Trick <laughs> Event, which I think is really cool. But we could only see it twice because if they tried it again, they would run out of budget mid season. Wow. Uh, and like K was doing it casually. Uh, but what I mean, like, like the side characters are characters, they're people. Uh, Letta, she lasted like five minutes. <laughs> but in those five minutes, <laughs> in those five minutes, she did so much. Like, I can say more about her than I can about a lot of characters in Kamen Rider. That were actually prominent and lasted multiple episodes. Let's say just existing fucked Buffer up in a way. Because uh, we do see the stakes of it. And I think that's cool. Because not only does it fit with the themes of you have to fight 
to survive, but it also shows us Buffa's development. Buffa in like episode three would tell her to fuck off and die. <laughs> In episode 9, you see you go like, hey, dude, you're going to die if you don't fight. So you better fight now. And she didn't listen. And, go, and we see her hubris in a way. I love the word hubris. Of her thing, <laughs> oh, she can win. But then, um, but then like, not fighting for it. And she gets punished instantly in a really terrifying scene. A lot of people found it, at least. Of her getting jumped. Like, she gets jumped and murdered on screen. And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> they killed her. And... Another thing I want to add, like, really quick, is how, like, Geese is not afraid to, like, shock its audience in a way by actually showing things are kind of messed up. Both in, the, like, the fights, like, Jinpin dying in episode two, uh, Shiro getting one shot, uh, like, cactus die out of nowhere. And there's it's sad and it's impactful. But we also have, like, the moments with Neon, Neon getting slapped is a moment that, like, I had to pause the episode, hold my my jaw like, cause my jaw dropped. I didn't have, I never expected something like that in Kamen Rider. She fucking dropped with my jaw, dude. <laughs> like, that was scary. That was terrifying. Yeah, the, the, Geese is really mature for like what it usually does. Like going from the bathhouse, hey guys, let's go clean, <laughs> uh, to <laughs> Neon getting abused in her household. Oh. What the fuck was that jump? <laughs> it's really good. I, I really say, like it. That, that scene shocked me. Like I had to replay it, and I watched Geats with my school friend. Like I've gotten him to like I, f- I forced him to watch it, and like we had to pause it and rewatch it because like I I already had seen it the day before, but like we were both shocked, and I was shocked again, and he was shocked for the first time. Like that had an impact. I have to say though, <laughs> Neon might probably be probably be um Yu Yu Takahashi's first actual good female character in my Honestly. opinion. Honestly, because the way he's writing her, it's actually like getting me interested it, in her. She doesn't feel like another Yuwa or like you know a Poppy. She actually feels like she has a part in the show, probably because like her dad, who now showed up on screen, has like you know has this mystery that he knows what's going on and he wants his daughter to participate in the Zara Grand Prix. Of course, we don't know that, but. The feeling is there because why did he bring Sumori over to the mansion? <laughs> yeah, the, I like Nico Exit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think another thing that Gates does really well is it, it's marketing in the way that like it it when Gates was first introduced and like debuted and they showed off like like the cast. Um, Shiro was one of the first ones there, and like he even tweeted, like his actor tweeted out, you know, like like, hey, watch me on Conrad or Geats and all that, and then he dies, you know, like like instantly, instantly, yeah. and and I think, and I think that's that's what builds discussion and hype around Geats like so so well, where like even their actors are able to just do or like tweet something out, and and everybody else it goes into fan theories, and it's just really interesting. Mm-hmm. Because when it comes to revise, it was like, oh, we think we think they're gonna do this, and then they and then they like try to do it, and they're like, oh, but but never mind, no, never mind. And but then with Geats, you 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 see these people that, like in the opening theme, like it, you actually see the characters that like like disappear from the opening theme in the next episode, and that's just really really cool. It's really cool detail. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it has to do with an awful song, but the details are still there. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck, man. <laughs> but yeah like i i don't think i've ever cared that much about listening to an opening because like i do listen to the opening when it bangs and i will, I will admit just lost is not that much of a banger but um <laughs> i always watch it because i'm like it feels like part of the show like episode i think was the episode nine seeing k missing and only having like those three like three of our main four like not even like the panama like three of them is it's it's heart wrenching. You're like, where is Kawa? It feels uncomfortable. You're like, yeah. Wow, I know like, he's gonna be back, but this hurts me. <laughs> Kawa missing hurts, and and everybody knows he's gonna be back. Like they have, they're promoting his fucking soap, his fucking tanuki soba. Like you know he's gonna be back. <laughs> you but, said um, soap for a second, and like, I was so confused. Tanuki soap. <laughs> 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 I will buy it and so but like you know he's gonna be back but like 
the, like I think it was like three episodes ago, not even three, like one episode, and then he comes back as a civilian for two. Like those th- episodes where he's not tycoon, they hurt. You're yeah. like, wow, I miss him. Yeah, he <laughs> My was baby boy, where missing. is he? Also, in conclusion, Keats opening his fire on mute. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, so Sorry, I, had I had to add that. Um, I I will admit the lyrics and feel of the OP or the the opening theme, it fits Geets, but as a song itself is awful. Like like the the, yeah. the beginning part throws me off every time. The invitation <laughs> part agree. is so off. I mean, I, I don't think I don't Listen, think it's a bad I... opening. I think I've heard worse. But it's just kind of off-putting, but it's not unlistenable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My like, take on the you know, as a, as a K-pop stand that listens to a lot of, like, noise music and, like, a lot of shit, it's, right. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's still a hard listen sometimes, but, like, <laughs> as I said... <laughs> Maybe it would be better if it had like an air horn in it or something. <laughs> well, I'd I well, agree. It's it's the opening halfway. Um, I actually wanted to go off of what Jen said, where uh, Takahashi writing a certain type of characters has not been very well with a very bad track rec- record. <laughs> but um, as like as much <laughs> as much as I like Neon and an even letter for like the five minutes she was on screen, I I feel really weird and off about the two female characters we had a lot of time with that their wishes were love and getting married and oh yeah yeah that that yeah. as as much as i uh, okay. yeah. as much as i love geats and i really and i really really don't have much bad to say about it that that's like the only thing that really stands out to me where it's like oh mm. do we have another that doesn't have to do with relationships or romance mm. yeah. well yeah. the thing is like uh, the recent yeah. episode said um like the usually like each episode in the end has this like desire grand prix rule and it's said that whenever someone keeps getting eliminated they lose the desire for their wish but so like what if like if neon keeps getting eliminated her wish actually changes to something you know much more cooler perhaps like she actually wants to end the desire grand prix or something yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna defend the wish actually i'm gonna why is your profile picture goro from ryuki again Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I remember. I think it was. Sorry. I think it was Gear that said it. I don't remember. I could be wrong. I remember like Kalba Mitra saying it. Uh, Neon's wish was originally, you know, presented as a kind of like this. Oh, look, a girl wants love, and I was also turned off by it. But I think there's a lot of new ones to it. I think somebody in chat actually said it. Um, I think Neon, uh, specifically that moment. If you remember when they, they met in the in the store in the fucking store with Ace and K1, like his sister a lot of people like to interpret in neon's wish as like not so a, a love when it comes to like you know romantic but more so like love from like any sort of person that is able to give like genuine like you know affection and this happened like a sisterly dynamic with like k and uh and uh his sister have I, remember, I think her name is sarah like mm-hmm. just having neon be a character that just wants someone that can love them for, as a person and not just like as an idea like their parents do i, yeah. I just assign me on they them pronouns uh, but um, <laughs> i feel like there's a lot of fun with a neon that you can have there with and uh, uh, another thing with episode 11 oh it was it was 10 uh we don't see her just like you know give up on love we see her give up on her escapes which is in a way i believe that her wish is escapism and like in a way, like it's an escapism wish of being able to just live a happy life away, feeling loved, and seeing her, like when she loses that wish, to just be content with her situation, is can be interpreted as like her giving up and trying to find a place that can give her what she needs. And I think that's cool. I like neon. I think it's fun and more than just romantic attraction. So, dude, uh... when. Can I just add, like, when when the, like, episode opened and the mother was, like, or, like, when it cut to them and she was, like, oh, you're going to have an arranged marriage. Like, my stomach dropped and, like, the way she just accepted it 
like after losing her wish to find love, it was so. so oh no! Girl. <laughs> so well, That's all. Oh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm glad Will went on that tangent because I actually have a very big counterpoint to to that because oh. I, I've heard oh. so many times that it's just the subtext and that. And that she doesn't truly mean a romance, love, love, ooey boy kind mm -hmm. of thing. But she specifically yeah. says <laughs> she wants a prince to sweep her off her feet. And yeah, I think it falls into escapism okay. though. Uh, like to say, like being a bit generic about it. She's not very creative. She she just she says nya every two seconds. I don't think she has like <laughs> the creativity to make a good <laughs> way to put her wish. But we've seen her but being yeah. able to. To get it into a little bit deeper than that, but especially when she talks to Ace yeah, and when she talks to Kawa, she actually has more of a subtext mm -hmm. to that than her wish. But mm -hmm. I will admit, um, there was one scene pretty early on after she talked about her wish. Kawa helped her out, I think, saved her during one of the one of the rounds, and she has that like this really like like desirable look uh, as as she finally understands. Oh, this might be the love I might be feeling instead. You know, mm -hmm. a friendship kind of love. But everything outside of that, it just feels kind of weird to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. No, I get it. I get it. Uh, think... Also, we'll... Uh... Oh, you're gone. Sorry. Thank you. I was going to say, I think Neon's arc being more so understanding what actual love is, more so than understanding romance itself would be would be a better thing, in, in my perspective. Because I do believe... I do... I really do love it when media actually expose versions of flow different types of flow and uh i think her experiencing affection in in a friendship way from k1 and, and starting to get it, get her, her own thoughts proper thoughts on what love and romance and the difference between the two is i yes. think that would be really cool for her <laughs> well you were gonna say something yeah. uh, there you go. I was. Now, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, my God. Ah. It's all uh, good. We're talking... Uh, well, if you're not going to say... Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, I was scared. Myself. Hey, Jen. <laughs> yes? Uh, have you heard what happened to Nago? Don't even think about it. Think about what? I'm not falling for it. Falling for what? What Jim? happened to Nago, Makrosatsu? What happened to Nago? Okay, okay. What happened to Nago? She yeah, got back happened? into the Desire Grand Prix in episode 10! Yay! Oh, okay. Real. And Real. honestly, Real. the Real. best toy was shown off in that episode because, like I said, I don't really care about the buckles, but that beat buckle was so great. Yes, it was cool. Yeah, oh. I liked it. One. Okay. Oh, she, wait, she's literally a fucking. She's a D and D bot. I love her. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Talk, talking of designs, buckles. I really want to talk about Gates on a production aspect and like all the action direction, mm. the the cam, the, the shots, the uh, the designs and everything. Because I think Gates Gates is one of the best we've got in Raver that we had only four. But I'm. It's like it really speaks to me in character designs and how minimal they are. But mm. also they manage to be really unique at the same time. I like that a lot about it. Yes, absolutely. There were some it really, really cool, like down. slow mo yeah. shots too that we've seen a couple times, mm. and th those are always so good. I love the ones with the cards, like in one of the earlier episodes, and yeah, ah, so so sick. gorgeous. They kind of did that mm. again in the new in the, in episode eleven, like yeah. at one point. So it, like yeah. I I love those shots. They're so cool and they're so yeah, well made. I think, uh, I'm really. I really love talking about uh, fight, fighting, fighting styles and fighting direction. That's why Kabuto mm -hmm. is one of my favorite as a whole. Cause yeah, I, I, I talk about this to Will a lot. I really do think mm -hmm. uh, Kabuto has like one of the best choreography in writer, only because how their fighting styles, especially uh, Kagami and uh, Kagami and Tendo's, line up with their mannerisms. Uh, on a narrative mm -hmm. level, I really love that about it, and I think we're seeing that with Gates too, which makes me really happy. I think mm -hmm. I, I, people dismiss this a lot, but I think fighting styles also uh, another really creative way to yeah. tell a story about a character because you know everyone having a unique fighting style makes them makes you understand them and you know like identify them more compared to others. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Like, uh, exactly. Like, I, I want to mention this when uh, we go on call. Buffo using his horns is not only the most badass shit ever. <laughs> seeing oh, this guy yeah. dash on people and, like, tackle them multiple times. Not like a one-time gimmick. They said, oh, because he has horns, might as well. Him using it consistently because he thinks it's cool. And him <laughs> being so, for lack of better, I'm stupid and reckless and lack and running in. When he has Magnum to attack with his fucking horns because he thinks it's comfortable, it's really cool. You get so I much out of buffer. Oh, or the pan. I love the pan. He's one of my favorite characters ever. Him being like a long range sniper that's so cocky that uh, doesn't engage in things and thinks he's better is translated so well into his fighting style. The way he's isolated constantly while also being able to. Be effective and destructive, and how his own hubris, him isolating himself, is what got him killed, quote unquote, like infected. Yes, it's so cool, and you can also see like the confidence in Ace's fighting style in comparison to Kawa. Fucking him getting boosted the first time and falling on his ass is funny, but it's <laughs> so accurate to his character. And Kawa, again, Kawa, I love Kawa. The fact that he doesn't even properly fight until episode 9 and how he instead just helps people and plays support, basically. Badass. It's badass. It's cool. It's so fucking cool. Uh, Seeing this guy that was always playing support, even in the boss fight, be be playing a support role. He's fucking being bait. (laughs) It's cool. And uh, Shinobi ties in so well to his story while also giving him this agile fighting style it's, i can talk about it for days ah so good <laughs> wow uh, yeah can you guys believe we're like at peak fiction at the same time with don brothers and geats real God, i hope don brothers doesn't fall off i hate you know it sometimes <laughs> it's almost it's, done i don't yeah, think it has done for <laughs> unless the last episode just like gets rid of everybody i doubt it's gonna <laughs> fall off last episodes end with i don't know not gay sex everyone dies except shuba sex because he never knew he knew he was the fucking dumb brother <laughs> hey jen <laughs> yes have you heard what happened to hold on what what's his name again uh, oh my god. Uh, Gin Pen. Jin. No, what happened? He says it's almost time to end the stream. Whoa. Uh, really? All right, All right, guys. How, how many more have we got left? This is this is well we're we're over time actually. So we're gonna oh. end with we we could probably do this forever, but I'm sleepy and I wanna play Yakuza seven. So <laughs> I <laughs> So we'll go down the line once again and give me your final thoughts on these first 11 episodes in a couple sentences. Oh, God. Uh, going down the line? Okay. But we're going to go backwards yeah. down the line. Jin. Uh, uh, it's okay, but it's starting to really pick up and grabbing my interest, and I can't wait to see what's going to come from now from now on. There. Um, I'm really looking forward to the, like, uh, new episodes and, like, where it's going to go. Like, literally every week I, like, tweet after watching the new episode. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited for the next episodes. Literally just finished the newest one. Um, and I'm really excited where, like, Ace's character is going to go because there's still a lot of mystery around him. And, yeah, that's about it. I'm just really excited for it. Marcos, it's Geetson time. Yo. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm also kind of looking forward to the next episodes now that um, I kind of picked up on Ace's personality and I'm actually kind of hooked on it. Yeah. Will. Here's my 10 minute essay. I think the uh, <laughs> motifs are amazing. Uh, I didn't get to go into the themes, but the themes of life and desire and. <laughs> Sounds are really cool. The aesthetics are beautiful. Uh, I really like the characters. They're all so lovable. Uh, Punk Jack is so unique and fun, and I would talk about him for days on my own. And I think that Geats will hopefully be really good. And if it's not, people will clip this and say, Will, you're stupid, and I'll cry. (laughs) (laughs) That's my thought. (laughs) Uh, 
is it on me hi uh i was yeah, kind of sad okay uh i'm getting mentioned i really like uh the resident evil aesthetic the last episode went for like the mansion and stuff that was really cool i'm really liking where the yamato secret is going i really like where the characters are going and how we're gonna see cable find his motivation again after picking up the uh, thing again uh, picking up the driver i think Ge how geese reveals its mysteries is at like a really good pace i think on the same level as build which makes me really like it and also be invested at the same time as it goes on i think it's really good i also really like the fight can you guys believe next discussion we're going to be talking about Morbius? Morbius? Morbius. Common Rider Morbius. Where he says it's Mormon time. It's Mormon time. It's Mormon time. Mormon time. Ah! It's Mormon time. He morbs over everyone. I thought we were going to talk about how halfway into Geats, everybody started hating the show. I can't wait. I can't wait. Beginning, so. uh, <laughs> no, I can't so wait different. for Marcus. I'm so different. Can't wait for Marcus Sazi to call me in uh, exactly like 20 weeks and be like, "Do you want to get on? Tell me how much Geet sucks. I'll I'll be more than <laughs> enthused." I oh Talk okay. So it. I'm actually super optimistic this time that Geets will not fall off. I'm so, I'm gonna put all. You know what, Jin? If Geets is like the best show of all time and then i will uh not lick you for a year or something i don't know what in the fuck <laughs> so with all that being said <laughs> join us next time for the morbius discussion kiva whoa <laughs> kiva oh kiva go mention wait <laughs> but, <laughs> before we end everybody everybody at the same time who's the hottest writer three Two, oh, one, I wanna... oh, okay, fine. Three, <laughs> two, one. Buffa. 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 I wanna kiss him on the lid. Buffa has like the fucking waist. Whoa. Buffa, bro, Buffa's lips, they're immaculate. And oh I mean this in the most God. genuine way possible. Okay, calm down, down, calm down. <laughs> Have you guys oh, heard of what happened to Buffa? Are we just, are we just doing this what, to finish off the video? What happened? Buffa. These notes. I already ended it. <laughs>